is Tuesday afternoon, guys. I am exhausted. So I pulled an all-nighter last night on accident because I was waiting for Michael to get off of work and he's on Korean Standard Time, so that was like 3 a.m. for me. I think it was even a little bit later than that. And then I realized that it was Amazon Prime Day. And then I found that Nintendo Switch accessories were on sale, so I was debating like which case to get. And I got a, a Switch Messenger bag, but by the time I'd done all of that research and purchased it, it was already the next day. So that was, or it was already 4 a.m. So that's not a lot. And I also got an all-time record of getting 50 tasks done for the day, which can be anything from like self-care, like remembering to take my, multi my multivitamins, or it can be like something big, like going to town to go get something, or taking the dog to the vet. So, but I got 50 things done, 53 actually to be exact, and so that was awesome. I'm exhausted. <laughs> and then today I did errands, so I didn't get any reading done yet. I brought Crooked Kingdom back to the library. I shipped off a bunch of stuff at the post office. I used my Subway coupons to get, um, to get a sandwich and some cookies. And then I also managed to get buy one get one cake pops at my local Starbucks. So I went in and they told me that they had accidentally spilled espresso beans on the cake pop. So I got this cake pop, but I also got this cake pop all for the price of one. So that's awesome. Yeah, this is not sponsored by Starbucks, any, by the way. <laughs> Um, what else did I do? I, like I said, I didn't get any reading done today, but I did read yesterday. I am like 3% done with Dragonfly and Amber. I am still equally confused as I was at 0%, so I don't really have a lot to say. It's obvious who Brianna's father is. I mean, from like the first page that Brianna is in the book. So I'm just confused about how we got here but I'm sure that we'll figure it out. I really like learning about like the historians and things like that, like how they get all of their information or the genealogy in Scotland. That doesn't bore me at all. And in fact, it really makes me wish that I had gotten the DNA kit um, for Prime Day while it was half off, but I'm gonna wait until Christmas since I got the messenger bag. What else am I reading? Ninja Daughter, I got to 40%. It's still info dumping in almost every scene. So it feels more like I'm learning about things than I'm reading a fiction book. If that makes sense, like it feels like it kind of is pulling me out of the story a little bit. And it's not that I'm not interested in like what Tori is teaching us about. I think that it's great, but it almost feels feels more like a non-fiction. It almost feels like each chapter is like a mini educational snippet about like martial arts or some kind of food recipe, which both of those things are awesome, but it's kind of pulls me out of the story or like keeps me from getting invested in the story because it took maybe two pages to describe what a necklace looks like and how it could be used to harm someone and I'm kind of like I don't even remember why we were talking about the necklace in the first place and then she's like oh yeah I'm going on my date with this necklace and it's just a little jarring so that sucks but it's okay I think maybe it'll get better once some sort of action picks up I guess into the Void, I think I am 30% done. I think I've got to chapter 6 today. I listened to almost a whole chapter, which was 35 minutes yesterday, but I had completely spaced out because I was so tired. And I don't remember, I didn't remember any of it, so I had to restart the whole chapter. And it's, it's okay so far. I, I don't really have any complaints. I'm very interested. And the backstory of the, or maybe not the, I'm interested in what happened to her brother. I'm a lot more interested in the main character's brother than, than her. 
I'm also really interested by the fact that every time I listen to the audiobook, I know the character's name. I could spell it to you, pronounce it to you, write it down. But every time I'm on this YouTube video, I think her name is Liana. And I know it's not Liana. But I couldn't... Alana? That's not right. I couldn't tell it to you. As soon as I... Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so annoying. I don't remember her name. But she's not, she's not as interesting as her brother, who's... I actually don't know his name. It's like Day or something like that. I had no idea how hard it was to remember names in audiobooks. It's just, I really have to see it, like the text, to remember anything about the characters. I think that's hilarious. But it, like I said, it's good. Um, those are both my buddy reads. So once I get through those, awesome. Uh, two days ago, I think it was Sunday around 11, we had a live show with the Trick or treat -a -thon, and I made it for the end, so I got to meet the host. That was awesome. They all seemed really nice, and with that one, that's the one that has eight prompts that I'm taking part in, and I'm currently reading the ghost prompt for Dragonfly and Amber. And that's, I think, the only one. I think that both my buddy reads didn't make that. And I actually managed to get a copy of A Song Below Watcher in at two of my holds this week. So I have it as an audiobook and an ebook. So I'm trying, because I'm a little bit farther ahead than Amber is in our buddy read of Into the Void, I'm trying to swap out A Song Below Watcher and Into the Void. So I did listen to, I think, the first chapter. I'm only, I think I'm already 9% done though, so that, the book is quite short if I'm calculating the chapters correctly, but I really like the narrator's voice. I think it's only one, but she sounds so different between the different POVs of, of the characters, whose, um, whose names I also don't know because it's an audiobook. Um, hopefully I remember all of these characters' names in time for next time. But I did like it so far, um, where we, we learned that, oh, one of them is Octavia, and I think she is the one that we learn is a siren, and we just learned, like, a little bit of backstory into the sirens. But like I said, it's really interesting so far, so that is exciting. I'm excited to read more of that. But what I'm most excited to talk about is that is my arcs for this week. So I joined Bookish first, and it's where you can get a first impression, which is normally like one to three chapters of an arc or an upcoming book, and then you write a mini review about it. I think you only have to write like three lines or something, but I've never had any issue underwriting anything in my life. So I always write way more than that. <laughs> and I read Notorious by uh, uh, Minerva Spencer, I want to say. And I wasn't sure what I was going to think about it. It was rated like 3.6 stars on Goodreads. So normally I wouldn't have touched it, but it's a free book. And I read the first impression with eight hours left on the deadline and I could not close the tab to go I could not close off of the tab to even go do anything else it was so good and I I just want to read the rest of the book right now and it doesn't even come out until November so I entered the raffle after I was done I did not win the raffle and I'm heartbroken but I understand because I won last week's raffle for a black buck but it was so good. The characters were very interesting. It seems like it's definitely going to be an enemies to lovers romance and hopefully a slow burn. I think that could potentially be its only downfall so far is if they get together like chapter two. Well, I guess I read the first two chapters, so like chapter five. But it seemed really interesting. It seems like the characters had a lot of like in-depth personality and like different facets to their personality, like a kind of different people depending on who they are speaking to at the time. And it's a historical fiction. Yeah, that it seems awesome. And I put in a 
a I entered the giveaway on Goodreads for it. I've never actually won a giveaway on Goodreads, so I don't have a lot of faith in winning that, but I did put in a request on NetGalley as well to try and get an arc of that. And I'm at 80% for my ratio right now, so like I'm really hoping that I manage to get an arc of that because it was so good and I would already recommend it at least based off of the like two or three chapters that I've read so far. The banter between the, well, who I assume is the main female and the main male of the series. Oh, his name was Gabriel. Drus Drusilla and Gabriel. That's right. So the banter between Drusilla and Gabriel was on point. I was smirking like the first paragraph and I actually started laughing out loud like reading even the first chapter so that was that was great I enjoyed that a lot because normally I have to get to like 30% into a book before I even really care about any of the cast so I really approve totally would recommend checking it out if you like historical fiction or characters who are sassy to one another <laughs> and besides that I had put in a request for Send Me Their Souls. I think last week I ranted like two days in a row about how I could not find any promotional material or like pre-orders or anything like that for the book. So I put in a request, but I was going to buy it in October on an ebook so that I did not need the physical one to not match the rest of the series that at home. But I went on to NetGalley to request Notorious yesterday and saw that my ratio was at 80% instead of 100%. So I thought maybe I had gotten one of the uh, lesser known books that I requested just because I'm trying to get my ratio for like more books so that my profile looks better. Um, and I went to my bookshelf and it said I had an unread book so I thought it was one of the ones that I didn't really know anything about and I was like oh cool I'll get to that in November I'm not gonna deal with it but I got a copy of Send Me Their Souls by Entangled Teen so thank you so much to NetGalley and to Entangled Teen because I saw that and I literally gasped <laughs> I was so shocked because I've never gotten an arc of something yet that I'm like super emotionally attached to like you guys have no idea how excited I am like to me I've made it <laughs> I'm so happy this is the last one in the trilogy of the uh, bring me their heart series by Sarah Wolf and I'm really attached to these characters and Sarah left us on a cliffhanger and like the past two books so I'm really excited to come to like a final ending for the series and I don't know what to do because you guys know I already have a bunch of books I'm trying to read in October so I need to figure out how to fit that into at least one of my TBRs for Trick or Treatathon or the Phoenix Riders Readathon. Um, I finished my giveaway for the Forever Watch and no one entered which I'm not even mad about because I really can't recommend this book to anyone. So I thought, oh, I guess I'll just bring it to the library. And I called the library that's closest to me, and they said they weren't accepting books. So I wasn't sure if that was because of the pandemic or because they're moving in a month or two. Next month, yeah. And so I called the town library, and they said they're also not accepting books. So I went online to the city library, and they are also not accepting books. So this bad boy is going into the Goodwill pile with my old clothes. And yeah, I've really, I've tried all year. I got this from a friend. I tried to give it back to my friend. He didn't reply. It's like I've stuck with this book for life. At this point, if I didn't if I wasn't so lawful good, I would just leave it on the sidewalk and hope someone thought that their kid had dropped it. But I can't do that to a book, even if it's a horrible book. So I'm going to give it to Goodwill, and hopefully it goes to a good home of someone who appreciates this book, who isn't me. I just want it out of my house. But yeah, by, good re by a Goodwill pile, I mean the large garbage bag of things that I'm collecting that Michael can take to Goodwill when he gets home. 
I reviewed Six of Crows, which I gave it five stars because you all know I loved that series. And I need to take a picture of Sky in the Deep and write a review for that, which, to be honest, I'm exhausted. And I'm really not sure that I can do anything else today except take a nap or just lie down and rest my eyes for a little bit, maybe turn an audiobook on. I can't tell if I have a headache or, or if I just need to close my eyes. But yeah, I think I'm just looking at my post-it note wall. I think that that's pretty much it. I need to read the excerpt for Waiting for the Night Song, which is another upcoming arc on Bookish First, and I don't know anything about it, but it was rated well. And I did read the synopsis, which I have already forgotten, but I did think it sounded really interesting. So I do need to read that as well, but I don't foresee myself doing that immediately. And then for yoga, I need to try and I'm trying to learn the crow pose. I managed it for approximately one second last night. And the goal was to get it for three seconds. So I could try that tonight. Like maybe I'm so tired that I won't even be afraid of falling over. Or maybe I'll just fall over and fall asleep on my yoga mat. Either one is kind of a good option for me. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm definitely going to eat one of my cake pops like immediately after this. And yeah i guess i might check back in later tonight if i get any progress done or otherwise i will check back in on wednesday morning it is thursday evening and i'm hoping that i fixed the strange audio that's been happening in the past couple of recordings i think other people are having this issue in obs studios as well but unfortunately this is the only mm, recording program that i can use at the moment. So we're going to try to find a workaround in the meantime. I have been feeling sick most of the week, so I really haven't gotten anything done since I recorded last on Tuesday, I think. I read about one chapter each in all of the books that I'm reading. I am like two or three percent done with Dragonfly and Amber. I have a theory about Roger not being who we think Roger is, but that would make him related to Brianna. So I'm not sure how how weird Diana is willing to get in this book, and I will be weirded out if it's what I think it is. So hopefully I'm wrong. I don't want to say anything else without spoiling it, especially if you haven't read the first book, Outlander. I have not watched the TV show besides... 10 episodes of the first season and I'm trying not to watch season two until after I read this book. I am interested to read more but it's taking me a while. I'm trying to read that outside to get some fresh air and I'm just not making very much progress when I don't feel well enough to go outside. <laughs> I am about 40% done with the ninja daughter. I am starting to like it more it still definitely feels kind of like an educational detailed read, but there's a part that I find kind of weird and I don't really understand where we're going with it. Like if this is an enemies to lovers trope, this is freaking weird and I'm hoping that that's not what's going on here, but I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. So I guess we'll find out because I'm almost halfway done now. I should definitely be halfway done by the time that I check it next. And what else am I reading? I think I am 10% done with A Song Below Water, which I may have been on Tuesday as well. I am finding it very interesting still. I am liking the characters and the narrator from what I have read so far. And it sounds like they're, I don't know if it's American Sign Language or just Sign Language in general, but they are using it even in the beginning chapters. And I didn't know that this book had sign language. I love seeing that in books. So that makes me really happy. 
I don't know that I can give a review on it yet since I'm only at 10%. Right now, if I had to, like based off of what I've read, I guess I would say four stars because I don't really have any complaints so far, but I'm also not like, oh my god, this is amazing, which I don't know that I would at 10%. So like we're, we're doing good so far. <laughs> so Into the Void, I am 40% through Into the Void now. I'm liking the dynamic between, oh my god. Oh my god, what is her name? Honora. Oh, it's not. It's. Oh. This is going to bother me because I am going to go back in and edit these videos and just watch myself fail every day. But it's fine. Whatever her face is and Trisana, Tree, I think that dynamic is interesting. I would. In a romance book, I would say, okay, these two are definitely going to be together. This is definitely a slow burn. But this is a Star Wars book. And I don't, like, in the movies, there's always a romance in every Star Wars movie, I think. And so, with the whole, like, Han and Leia and um, Padme and Anakin. So, I'm not sure if, is it like that in regular Star Wars books? Like, if there is one character and another character and they meet are they just going to end up together or is it possible that they're just going to be like bro tp you know which i'd be okay with that as well that'd be an interesting switch up in tropes so i'm liking it so far i don't have any complaints i am still most interested in how the brother got to where he is now and like what what <laughs> this current brother is like what his beliefs are and how they differ from his sister who, whose name I don't know it's fine so yes I'm liking it I think I am on like chapter nine now so I yeah I will be hopefully reading more of all of those later tonight I took a photograph of Sky in the Deep, which I need to write a review for. I haven't read the excerpt for Waiting for the Night Song yet. So I did get approved for another arc, which I'm super excited about, but I'm I'm drowning now. <laughs> Just a little bit in October. But this one is called How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole, and it looks like it is the first book in the series called Runaway Royals. I don't really know anything about it except it might be an arranged marriage, but I'm really not sure if that's even true. I just, I saw the cover on NetGalley and it was beautiful. I think that's pretty much it. I need to also unhook the hose in the front yard because we have a frost warning tonight and my dad says that a frost warning is different than the first snow of the year and he was like Ashley this is not an excuse for you to break out the Christmas music and I was like mm, but isn't it so we'll see we'll see how much I get done tonight and how festive I'm feeling I'm feeling really festive so this is bad because Michael agreed that we could start Christmas um, after Halloween this year instead of after Thanksgiving because um, <laughs> it's been a hell of a year so with deployment and the pandemic and I mean just those two things especially and then oh yeah um, brown recluse bite and <laughs> car problems I think I fixed those though. but anyway it's been a year and I think I've won this one and we use basically that or getting a new dog so you know, door in the face technique, thanks psychology. But that's pretty much it for tonight. Um, I might check back in later if I get some reading done after my stir fry, but uh, we will see what I manage. Otherwise, I will see y'all in the morning. Bye. So about 5 p.m., I was like, I'm going, I can barely keep my eyes open, so I'm just going to lie down in bed and read Dragonfly and Amber and get a bunch done. But instead, I just fell asleep instantly, and I woke up two hours later. And I don't think I would have even woken up if it wasn't for the fact that Caroline was lying on my chest until I couldn't breathe because we'd missed our, uh, our walk for the night. So I got up, and I walked her really fast, and now, and then I came home and tried to film this video and failed. So here we are now. I'm very hungry. I'm actually pretty hangry at this point. So this is going to be really fast. <laughs> or I'm just going to like diss every book I've ever read or something crazy. <laughs> but um, 
Yes, so I need to feed Caroline dinner. Um, I need to either make drunk stir fry or uh, go order Pizza Hut or Domino's because that's the only place that really delivers on post right now in our town. And we don't really have any options in our town. So um, that will probably be what I do for dinner. And then I will be playing Among Us for game night with my friends tonight. So I don't know if I'll get any more reading done. But I did finally get to take my book post to know off the wall because I got three things done. I got to 50% on uh, The Ninja Daughter. I'm starting to like the story a lot more now. It feels like we're actually moving along instead of just learning things. Which again, like I'm not, I'm really not dissing the way that the story is written or like just the story in general. I don't have any actual complaints with it. Um, it's just that when I heard thriller, I guess in my head, I was thinking something more like spooky and this isn't spooky at all. You know, like there's murder, but I, I guess I didn't really understand maybe what a thriller is because I've read so little. So I'm not really sure. I just wasn't what I was expecting. So that's not the fault of the story as much as like my own. It was my own <laughs> preconceived notions as to why I was not enjoying the story thus far. Although mm, I do have one complaint. I'm probably hangry. I told you if I didn't get food first, I was going to start complaining. I don't know if they're trying to set us up for a love triangle. And if they are, I am not. I am so confused. It, mm, I don't think I would like this. I, I do have like a guilty pleasure for love triangles. Like I'm always like, mm, I hate love triangles. And then that's usually a lie. But this one, oh, I would not like this as a love triangle unless there's like significant information that I am missing. I feel like that would be cringy AF. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Then I did my review of Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young, which I gave four stars. So I got that written up on Goodreads, and then I shared it on my bookstagram and on my Twitter. So the only thing that I did not accomplish was to read Waiting for the Night, Waiting for the Night song excerpt. I don't have the author's name with me, but that is one of the current raffle books with Bookish First. So I really wanted to get ahead and read that. But I never read it until the day that it's due, so we'll see if I get it done on Monday. On Into the Void, I am very close. I'm at 40-something right now. I read about 15 minutes of it today. I think the next, I'm on like chapter nine and a half. The, the audiobook is kind of split up strangely, but I, I'm liking it. Oh, wait, hold on. Do I know her name? It's Lannery. Oh, I remembered it for the first time. I had to sign it. And I probably, I could be spelling that completely wrong because it's an audiobook. I did that. I want to get to 25% in A Song Below Water. Oh, I need to work on my November TBR. I decided I am going to do the Clear Your Shit Readathon. It was not a very productive week at all, but my migraines are gone now. And I'm really thankful for that. I'm feeling a lot better. And yeah, I'm hoping to do better next week. I hope that everyone is having a great start to their weekend and I will check back in on Monday.